Okay, a pleasant Saturday afternoon to everyone. My name is Andrew, one of the pastors here in Victor Malate. Today is the last week of our short two-week series titled, The Mission Continues. This series is our, again, our annual series about missions, about reaching the nations for Jesus. If you've just recently attended our church and just started to grow in your discipleship journey, maybe you're not yet as familiar with this side and aspect of our church movement. But if matagal ka na sa church na ito, you know what this, is, what this series is about, right? It's that time of the year when we talk about missions. As a church, our heart is to honor God and make disciples. But we don't just want to honor God and make disciples here in Metro Manila and the provinces of the Philippines. Our heart is to make disciples of all nations. Yes, we find that this making disciples of all nations is something that God is very passionate about. Whenever we do this series on missions, I want us to know that this isn't just something that <clears throat> one day na pagisipan ng leaders natin, then they said, "Oi, pumunta kaya tayo ng ibang bansa at magpreach ng gospel doon." Wala lang mo kang masaya gawin. No, this is not man's idea. This is God's idea. In fact, one of the central theological themes of Scripture is missions and reaching the nations with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through this series, our heart is that we'll have a better understanding of what part. All of us can play in reaching the nations. And yes, lahat po tayo, we have a part to play. And many of you know this already, and in part natin, we pray, we give, and we go. When we talk about reaching the nations, this is not just the job of our cross-cultural missionaries, though we appreciate them. The whole church ought to be involved with God's plan in redeeming the nations. Hopefully after this week, all of us listening to this message We'll have a clear understanding of the power of the gospel to change not only lives but nations as well amen even with the recent pandemic and restrictions on movement worldwide we make god's mission a priority for us while the world may have seemingly stopped the mission continues so if you have your bibles with you kindly open them with me to romans chapter 15 verses 14 to 21. romans 15 verses 14 to 21. Let me, just, let me just read that for you. I myself am, am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. But on some points, I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Illyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus, I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been, been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never heard will understand. Let's just, let's just take this time to pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this preaching. Father, thank you, God, for teaching us about your heart for, na for nations and reaching um, more people groups for the gospel of the, of, the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Heavenly Father, that all of us will understand the part that we play as a church in reaching the nations. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody say online, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Okay, so let's just read the context of that pericope of the passage of Scripture that I read. The verse that we just read is the start of the book end of Paul's letter to the Romans. After writing a great theological treatise about the gospel, this is what we've been preaching about the first few weeks of the Gospel Explained series, tama? And showing us its application in our lives, Romans 12 yon onwards, we'll talk more about that in the next few weeks. In Romans 15, Paul writes things in, the, in, in this last part of Romans 15 about one, his particular calling from God to reach the, the, the Gentile world. And yung mga future plans niya, future missionary journeys. So first, let's look at his ministry as an apostle to the Gentiles. What does that mean, okay? Sabi ni Paul in Romans 15, 16, 
Sabi niya, to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Paul is an apostle set apart by God. We know that, right? We know that from his introductions. An apostle is one who is sent by God to do his mission and will. So God set apart the apostle Paul. We can clearly see that in the book of Acts to carry the gospel forward to the Gentile world. It's clearly seen as well in Galatians 2.8. I, I won't, we don't have time to look at that anymore. Pero nakasulad that Paul was given this grace from God while the apostle Peter, on the other hand, was the one sent to minister to the Jews. This is why Paul is so bold to the Roman Christians as he mentions in Romans 15.15. 15. That's because he was secure of his calling from God. The gospel is not just for God's chosen people. Sino yung chosen people ni God? The Israelites. But it's clear, clearly seen in Scripture from the Old Testament to the New Testament that God's heart is for the entire world. The Gentiles, those who are not descended from Israel physically. So when Paul wrote itong verse 16 na ito, which we read earlier, he was actually quoting from the Old Testament in Ezekiel 36 and Isaiah 66. In the Old Testament, the promise is that God will vindicate the holiness of His great name amongst the nations and that the Gentiles will be an offering to the Lord. Paul's saying here that he has been called by God to lead the charge in the spreading of the gospel to the Gentile world. Because it clears the scripture and purpose of God to reach out to the nations. Romans 15, 18, let's, let me read that for you. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed. In verse 18, Paul says that he goes on to preach what Christ did, the gospel. He preaches the gospel, which he has written in the first part of Romans, with the hope that the Gentiles will offer their bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. We'll see more of this in Romans 12 next week as we resume the Gospel Explained series. Now, in verse 19, Paul says this. Sabi niya, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Illyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the Gospel of Christ. In this verse, scholars would say that Paul, si Paul dito, he was walking down memory lane. He was recounting the first few years of his missionary journey. Okay? That, that is his journey from, from where he came from, from Jerusalem to Asia Minor, where we find modern-day modern Turkey today, the meeting point of Europe and Asia, to the first parts of Europe. Doon yung Elyricum part. Kita nyo ba yun sa map? So this is a verse na binasa natin. Paul clearly says that he has fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. Now, what does that mean? Fulfilled? Ibig sabihin ba nun, lahat ng tao na na-save during that time in those regions? Probably not. But what Paul is probably saying here is that because of these missionary journeys, thriving churches has been planted in key centers throughout this area. And because of these churches which he has planted, for him, even though many people have not yet been reached out in these regions, he was now looking for other opportunities and fields, having his sights set out more towards Western Europe. Makikita natin yan later. Now, how does that relate to us in our church? For many of you, you know that our church here in the Philippines was planted 36 years ago by a group of American missionaries. Over 100 students responded to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of those students became church planters in many parts of the Philippines up until today. Even though our church was, was young, and there are millions of Filipinos more who need to reach, hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, yung mga leaders natin from the very beginning have already intentionally set their sights in reaching the nations. World maps have, was placed in the centers where we gather to purposefully remind those who are part of the church, that the gospel isn't just for the Philippines, but it is for the rest of the world. So in the early days of our church, we would sow and bless God's work to the nations consistently and generously because we believe that it is God's heart to reach the world. 
All this in spite of the limited resources that we have as a church during those times. We followed the pattern of the Apostle Paul. For the first few years, our church victory here in the Philippines became a thriving church, planting other churches in the nations. And just like what Paul said, Romans 15, 20, sabi niya, And thus, I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. Our desire is the same as the desire of Paul, to take the gospel to places where it was not taken before. To boldly go where no man has ever gone before. Uy, parang movie lang yun. Nung sinabi ni Paul, ambition dito. Ambition means to have a strong desire to do or achieve something. And that's what we have in our church. As a movement, we want to reach the nations. We, want, we plan for that. But we also want to be able to achieve and accomplish that. The way we do it in missions is we plan years in advance. We scout the land. We pray and see if any of our people have that calling and strong desire to obey God's call to make disciples of all nations. So there, as early as the first few years, we've sent people to the nations as soon as possible. We didn't wait until we have millions of people in our church before we go to the nations. No, because it's not just about allocating resources. This is about God's will and God's desire to reach the nations. Amen? Amen. You know, people have asked this with regard to our efforts in doing missionary work in other nations. Why send missionaries long-term and short-term to other nations when there's still so much work to be done here in the Philippines? And totoo naman yun. There's still a lot of work to be done here in the Philippines. And I think it's because the advantage that we have in this country is we have the ability already to plant thriving churches in our first few years as a movement. And we want to be faithful in God's call to reach the nations. We cannot ignore it. It's a mandate from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Go and make disciples of all nations. Amen? Amen. This is our mission as a church. Our mission is to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Just like the Apostle Paul, our response as a church has always been to go. So everyone say go. Okay, go. Comment down in the comment section. Okay, sa mga nagsabi na go, baka kayo ngayon tawagin ni God to go to the nations. Amen? Amen. Baka nag-delete na kayo bigla sa comment section. So there, we saw Paul's calling as a minister to the Gentiles. What that meant for him, what that meant in relation to God's plan and how it translates to his ministry is it led him to go to places where Christ has not yet, not yet been named. And that is our desire for our church as well. Amen? We will go. We are gonna go. We will gonna go. Mali, mali na yung ano, grammar. Okay. Now after this, in the last part of Romans 15, Paul talks about his future plan in light of his calling from God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. Romans 15, 23 to 24. He's talking about his future plans now here. Sabi niya Paul, But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come to you, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain and to be helped on my journey there by you once I have enjoyed your company for a while. So since Paul just said that he has fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ, San again, from Jerusalem and all the way to Illyricum, now he shares about his eventual plans to engage in church planting work in Spain. It was in his intent to preach the gospel in Spain. Spain being the far west in Europe. Kaya probably naholi siya in terms of the expansion of the gospel and the kingdom. Dati kasi wala pa mga airplanes where you can just go wherever you want in a day's time. Kaya siguro medyo progressive yung pag-expand ng gospel from Jerusalem. So Paul had his sights set on that. That's where he wanted to go. That's his future plan. Clear ba tayo doon? Okay. But, in the middle of Paul's plan to advance God's work in Spain, he plans to stop in Rome, in the country of Italy today, the church and the location of the letter where we get our text for today's preaching. Kaya letter of, Roman, letter of Paul to the Romans, diba? What was one of the reasons as to why Paul wrote the letter to the Romans? Question mark. Here's why. One of the reasons. 
Paul sent this letter in advance to Rome because he hoped that the Roman Christians there will help him in his journey to Spain. A huge part of this help is about getting missionary support for him to do God's work in advancing the kingdom of God. Ever since the time of the Bible and in, the, in church history, missionary work has always been supported financially by people who partner with them in advancing the gospel. During Paul's time, he asked for the churches for their support in financing God's mission. Up until now, we still do this as well. People give for the advancement of God's kingdom. Folks, money is, is not an end in itself. Money is a neutral object. It depends on what we do with the money, which makes it good or bad. If the purpose of finances is to advance God's kingdom, then praise God, right? How many of you believe? Now, when money is used for God's purposes, then that's an honorable thing to do, right? Amen? However, when money is used for evil intentions like corruption and so on and so forth, or when it's used for things that will not benefit humanity, then those are things that we should avoid. Before I became a full-time pastor here in Victory, Malate, my first full-time role in the church was a campus missionary. As a campus missionary, my role was similar to a cross-cultural missionary, but the difference is I stay here in the Philippines and reach out the campuses. As a campus missionary, the way that I'm able to to fulfill God's purpose is because God will give me partners to be able to complete my partnership team so I can go and make disciples amongst the students in the campuses. Sa mga cross-cultural missionaries natin ngayon, they go to the nations with their partnership team. It takes a team for them to be able to do what they are called to do, just like Paul. That's the biblical pattern. For some, they're not called to go to the nations full-time, but only on a short-term basis. In this church, we have 10 days missions trip. Come on, 10 days. Sino mga nakapag 10 days na? Shout out nyo sa comments yung mga nations na napundahan nyo. We have 10 days missions trip where a group of non-full-time staff, syempre, may mga, minsan may kasamang full-time, and leaders go to the nations to help our church plant efforts. These people are also able to go because people believe in what they're doing and partner with them financially so that they can advance the kingdom of God together. And in fact, even in church history, if you study the Moravians, the Wesleyan movements, thousands and hundreds of thousands and probably even millions to date have been sent to the whole world so that the gospel of Jesus Christ may be preached. The way they are able to go is because God supplied them with financial resources through the blessings of other people. What we're doing in this church right, right now is nothing new. This is clearly the biblical pattern. Paul's missionary journey was accomplished because of the generosity and the contributions of the churches who partnered with him. Okay? So, yeah. So, we, we give to advance the kingdom of God. So, so earlier we saw Paul go. Earlier we, and after that, we saw his purpose, why he wrote Romans, so that he can get partnership with them. Now, but at the same time, it's not just about finances. But our prayers for the Lord's worker as, workers as well. Our prayers go a long way in helping fulfill the mission of Christ. Do you believe that? Kasi pag going and giving lang kasi, it might just be man's effort at the end of the day. We pray because we know that God hears them and He acts on those prayers as we hold the ropes for our missionaries. Romans 15.30, sabi ni Paul dito, I appeal to you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf. Hopefully, we will strive together in prayer for the people who are doing the Lord's work in different nations. Amen? Currently, currently we have 176 long-term Filipino missionaries in 45 nations around the world. If you know of a full-time cross-cultural missionary, please continually pray for them. I said prayers are really powerful. And this week, I don't know if you notice in our Facebook page, we posted some things. One is a crossword puzzle, the other is a GIF, and the flags of different nations. We didn't just post that in our social media so that we can have fun, although fun naman siya, diba? But we said in our post to pray for these nations because we truly believe that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So I hope that we will continually pray. Here in Victor Malate, as you can see in our slides, we have 22 cross-cultural missionaries. These are their pictures. One action point 
of this preaching is for us to continually pray for them, to hold the rope for them. We have these men and women who are our modern day uh, heroes of faith. Tomato, they left their profession to respond to God's call to proclaim the gospel in different nations. And hindi po joke yan, eh? being away with their family in a different setting, like sila za kanina, different setting, culture, culture, and people are some of the sacrifices that these missionaries do just to win a soul. Despite the pandemic, the mission continues. The preaching of the word never stops. Some of our missionaries are stuck here in the Philippines due to visa concern. But thanks to technology, nagagawa pa rin nila yung work ni God. Technology allows them to be connected and still do the ministry in the nation that they are assigned to. Now for the rest of us, God did not place that calling in our lives. But again, we can, take, we can still take part in the mission that God has for us. Number one, we can still take part of this. I mentioned by praying for them. For some of you listening to, the, to, to this message, if you can just commit to pray for them regularly, our, our cross-cultural missionaries, our 10 days missionaries, win na yun for us. Balaking bagay na ito sa ating mga missionaries. But another way we can take part is by giving as well. Just like what I said earlier. The biblical and church history pattern is that God finances the work of these men through other people or through churches so that they can preach the gospel where Christ is not yet known. So you as well can take part in God's mission by sending our missionaries in the field by supporting them financially. So these men and women do not earn from what they do. They are able to do what they do because they have with them a partnership team who regularly supports them financially just so that they can preach the gospel to the nation. So if God touched your heart to be part of what God is doing in the mission field by giving, then please click on the link on the Google form that will be posted in the comment section of this message. Also, you know, here's the screen capture on how to sign up in our Google form shown in this broadcast. Okay, so for now, uh, we will give you some time to commit to partner with them financially if God touched your heart to be a blessing for them. Because again, we, s we see this in the biblical pattern. We see this that God's work is advanced in the nation because people support them financially as well so that the gospel will be preached and we will be able to make disciples of all nations. Amen? Amen. So I'm just going to give you a few minutes right now, two minutes right now, so that you can uh, prayerfully consider and you know, click on the Google form if you want to partner with them. Okay? So two minutes starts right now.
Amen, amen. Let me just close this again with this uh, verse from Romans 15.20. Romans 15.20, sabi dito, and, and thus, I make it my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ has already been, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation. So as a church, this is how we can respond to God's call to reach the nations, to pray, to give, and to go. Let, you, let me just take the time to pray. Father, thank you, God, for the preaching of your word. Thank you, Lord God, um, for the learnings, Lord God, from the life of the Apostle Paul, Lord God, on his, his calling as a minister to the Gentiles. We ourselves are Gentiles, Lord God, and I pray that you will continue to give us that burden, Lord God, in our hearts to reach out our fellow men, to preach the gospel to them. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that for some of us, if we have been... Um, uh, if you have put that desire, Lord God, in our hearts to go, I pray, Lord God, that you will be the one to direct our steps, Lord God, on what we should take, Lord God, so that we can fulfill our personal calling in, in, in our lives. Thank you, God, for even, you will call people to give, Lord God, to call them to bless financially, Lord God, your work in advancing your kingdom to the nations. And I pray that all of us will Always pray continually, Lord God, because we believe that our prayers are powerful, Lord God. You are doing something in the supernatural. You hear our prayers, Lord God, as, as, we, as we pray for our missionaries, Lord God, our, as we pray for our 10 days missionaries, I, as we pray for people who are working in the missions department, Lord God, so that we can strategize, Lord God, how we can better, Lord God, um, reach out the nations, Lord God, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for this message, Lord God. And I pray that you will always keep the fire burning in our hearts, the fire for, for missions, Lord God, and reaching the nations. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Thank you, everyone, for watching. God bless you.